All right, well, thank you for coming, Doug. Nice to see you. Uh, Doug McCaig here uh, on our little uh, Distinguished Leaders of Sports <laughs> Medicine series. So I wondered if you could sort of start off with telling us what you're doing now, where you're located, uh, what's your job right now? I'm uh, chairman of the Department of Family Medicine at Indiana University School of Medicine. Uh, I also am director of the Center for Sports Medicine at IU. And uh, between all those jobs, I keep fairly busy. Now, does that mean you're a team physician, too? For yeah, I, I head team physician for uh, a university which used to be referred to as Ui Pui, <laughs> which stands for uh, Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis. Yeah. It's actually a Division I school uh, with a limited sports program. We have nine sports. And uh, but it's still Division difficult. One. Yeah, it's yeah. D One. Yeah, okay. It's D One okay. soccer and and uh, softball and track and field and swimming and uh, and uh, basketball. And men's and women's for mm -hmm. all pretty those? much all of those. Yeah. Right. Do you have uh, how many work with you? We have uh, team physician. Team physicians. There are three team physicians. Uh, they're all in my department. They're my faculty. And uh, we do a lot of things. Uh, we consult with the Colts, Indianapolis mm -hmm. Colts, which has been a nice year. Yeah. We, uh, we do a lot of work with the high schools in the area, especially some of the public schools. Mm -hmm. It's been one of the real interesting aspects of what's occurred in, in sports medicine. Uh, the, all the rich suburban high schools tend to be taken, uh, especially in this environment. And, a lot of the inner city schools aren't. That's, uh, that's not a very good situation to be in. So Rosemary Agostini was here this morning, and she was saying the same thing about the schools in Seattle. Yeah. She was yeah. trying to work with them because they were sort of being ignored. We have an obligation. Yeah. We have right. an obligation. So. Well, you're, you're the, the, now you're in family medicine, and your right. team physicians are in family medicine. At Washington, we have a different model. They're in orthopedics and sports medicine. Right. What, what's, the, what's it like in the rest of the <coughs> country? Are, are they the two major models for this? Or is it yeah, very... It's, uh, that's a good... Uh, there's lots of models. Yeah. You know, it's one of those... Yeah. Uh, if you've seen one sports medicine program, you've seen one, one. sports yeah, medicine yeah, program. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, I, I, I think... The difference, the change in the last 30 years or so has been that uh, prior to sports medicine being as popular as it is right now, uh, it was very difficult to get anybody to cover any mm -hmm. high school and in a lot of situations to cover colleges. Uh, they, there was just, there wasn't enough money in it, I guess. There was a lot yeah. of time involved. Yeah. And, and so what colleges would resort to doing many times is to, their team physician would end up being the head of the student health service who would see athletes over in the student Which health service. Which is what Warren Howe was just right. explaining at his small college. And it's, yeah. it's a not, uh, and we sort of came in, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time, and came in and sort of revolutionized the way most big-time colleges, because this was at Michigan State, but most big-time nice. colleges uh, cover things. Mm -hmm. And that coverage has now gone, as you've already accurately portrayed, into sort of two situations. There's always been an uneasy alliance between the orthopedic surgeon, uh, whom I think most feel has sports medicine in his purview because of mm -hmm. his training in musculoskeletal medicine, mm -hmm. and primary care, where one has to look at not only the 50% of the injuries that are, that are musculoskeletal re related, but the other 50% that aren't, and all the illnesses that, that yeah. come about as a result of that. We've, you know, in 25, 30 years, it's been an interesting tra transition, and I've met a lot of really wonderful orthopedic surgeons who really wanted to and needed to learn to be better prepared to be team physicians. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, my own colleagues in primary care and in family medicine uh, have just done outstanding work in the area of musculoskeletal medicine. So. Mm -hmm. 
Before we go into the past a little more, yeah. uh, you just have a new book. Yes. Uh, yes. Tell me a little bit about uh, the background of that. And, okay. Uh, uh, it's well, a very it exciting goes, thing. It goes into the past, too, a little okay, bit. Okay, good. The, uh, about uh, in the mid-'80s, uh, we began to realize as we began fellowship programs that, that we didn't really have a curriculum if you will, for primary mm -hmm. care sports medicine. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in Michigan State, uh, I think we can accurately take the credit for developing the curriculum for primary care sports medicine that then got ad adopted by, by other programs, et cetera. And out of that curriculum came the uh, sense that we needed to sort of write this down, because there was nothing. There literally was nothing in the, mm -hmm. in the marketplace at this all. This is the early 80s? This is the mid-80s. 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 And uh, so we decided to, <laughs> my colleague and I, Dave Howe at Michigan State, decided we were going to write this book. So we started in the mid-'80s, and it took us 11 years to get the, the wow. thing done. But we wrote the whole thing. We didn't edit it. So this it. is the second edition? No, the, the first edition. Okay. There was a first edition of this book that we're going to talk about okay. in a minute. Okay, okay. And uh, the first edition... Uh, I had a hard time getting any publishers in, interested. We finally got one. It was Brown and Benchmark. Mm -hmm. And uh, about four weeks after the first printing of the 5,000 copies of the book that we had, uh, they, they got sold and went out of business. Wow. But all the books got sold, but they wouldn't print. They wouldn't do a second printing, mm -hmm. even though the books Even though sold. it sold 5,000. Yeah, it went like That's that. That's strange. <laughs> So it was always my hope that, that we would get to a point where we could have a second edition. Yeah. And, uh, and things a have changed. So ACSM much. and Mark Robertson helped tremendously. Of course, there's a lot more books out on the market now, mm -hmm. but uh, ACSM really, uh, really came to the, to, to the table and really said, you know, we're going to, we think that the idea of a primary care sports medicine textbooks sort of with ACM's brand mm -hmm. on it will go a long way, and I would agree. Yeah. Uh, even though the market is crowded with a lot of books, I, I think uh, the international appeal of the organization and uh, what it has. This, this book uh, that was uh, just released yesterday is uh, really going to end up being the, the, uh, the, the front piece, sort of the hood ornament of a series of, of subsequent titles in sports medicine that will follow. And this is with Lippincott, Williams, and Wilkins? Lippincott, Williams, and Wilkins yeah. picked it up and uh, uh, is going to run with it. So I, I anticipate that, that uh, with ACSM's help, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it'll, it'll go it's very well. It's, it was very exciting to do. The book, most of the authors in the book ended up being, I, I got a little selfish here. We did make it an edited work. And most of the authors ended up being my former fellows, mm -hmm. which was nice because we got everybody together. Yeah, I haven't gotten to see it yet. So there's uh, oh, it's pretty book. There's sections by different people. Oh yeah, in the, uh, okay. right. And it runs through. Literally, it reestablishes the curriculum in what is not just primary care sports medicine, but mm -hmm. what is sports medicine. Yeah. The the, the original text was used as the basis for the uh, CAQ exam. Which is? The Certificate of Added Qualification, which is the okay. specialty exam that uh, began in about 94. And subsequent, most physicians that are in primary care and in sports medicine have taken. And it's a quality assurance exam. And it's something that's recognized in medicine as being sort of a subspecialty okay. board. So, and sports medicine is one of them, right, and, right. and this text is what they use for This that. is what they've used to outline the test, sure. so therefore, it, 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 as it, the forward reflects in it, it is a textbook that upon which most of the curriculum now in, in, uh, in sports medicine is based. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of that. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic accomplishment. Oh, yeah. So let, let's drop back farther okay. now. Um, undergrad school, uh, <laughs> were, you a, were you an athlete? Yeah, I was. I'm uh, one of those people. Yeah, the, 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 that chair has been filled with them already this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the, so uh, you're, you're an athlete and then pick up from there for your undergrad. Yeah, well, I, 
I was born and raised just outside of uh, Chicago, in one of the western suburbs. And uh, when I went to undergrad, I, I did so at Iowa State University oh. in Ames, Iowa. Yeah. And uh, I went there specifically because they had a veterinary medical school, and mm -hmm. I was going to be a veterinarian at that point. And uh, I did play basketball. I played basketball for two years. My, uh, my biggest claim to fame, lest anybody thinks they, lest anybody tries to get impressed by that, <laughs> I'm not bragging. Back then they had, uh, uh, our freshmen weren't eligible to play varsity basketball, so there were freshman teams. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Iowa State was in the Big Eight. It was called a Big Eight at that yeah. time. So we had a freshman team. We would play other. What other year is this, teams. Doug? It would be 1963, 1964. Okay. And so we played, uh, we would go do a round robin with uh, all the Big Eight teams. Uh, <laughs> and we were playing at Kansas. And my claim to fame, uh, I started for the freshman team, but my claim to fame was that I held JoJo White to 35 points before I fouled out in the third <laughs> quarter. And now he went on to what, with the, the Celtics. Boston Celtics, Celtics didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. I had no business even being on the court <laughs> or even in the same building. But the problem was, it was freshman, you know, you're, you, you play, <laughs> the poor coach had nobody else to put out there. You're, you're the so one. I'm the guy. <laughs> and graciously, since we didn't have a very good team, uh, the Kansas coach pulled JoJo after I fouled out. <laughs> You've done enough damage. Oh, he, got it. he didn't need any more points, though. So. So what? So you ended up going to medical so, school instead of vet school? Well, yeah. The, the rest of the story is is that uh, uh, I loved my time at, at Iowa State. I really, mm -hmm. truly did. I, I graduated. I did go to vet school for. Uh, I got into vet school early admission. Uh, so which in which what would have been my junior and senior year of college, and that, there was a special program that they had, and I. I realized all too quickly that I was still in the mindset of being a college student, and they expected me to be in the mindset of being a professional student. Yeah. Two different things. Two different worlds. And, <laughs> and I just, I finally realized that I was sit sitting there with a bunch of Iowa farm boys in a veterinary medical school. I didn't know any of the lingo. I, I got great grades, but uh, I began to realize that this is probably not what I wanted to uh, do. So I dropped out of vet school uh, in my senior year, came back for an extra year, took up and got my, my, master, my bachelor's degree uh, in uh, zoology, actually, which well, that and a dime might get you a cup of coffee these days. Uh, and from there, I, I got relatively lucky. I, I went to grad school. I got a, an NIH fellowship. Oh, wow. Uh, to, uh, to study cardiovascular physiology. See, I was a basic scientist, research yeah, scientist first. Yeah. And I did that at uh, Michigan State. I went to Michigan State and uh, did my cardiovascular work, got a master's of science degree. Mm. I actually joined the American College of Sports Medicine in 1968. Wow. At the year that I, that I wow. started my grad work. Via that route. Not, not the clinician. No, I wasn't a certainly clinician. at all at that point in my, time. But my was, I'm probably one of the, yeah. I don't think there's too many people who have done that. I don't think so. But I was a bench scientist. No. And, and who, was it someone at Michigan State that was in ACSM that sort of, the, that you were doing research with that I like to say there? yes. But there wasn't. But there wasn't. Hmm. I actually found it pretty much on my own. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm trying to think back now to, to uh, actually uh, uh, Dave, Wilm Dave Wilmore. Jack Wilmore. Jack Wilmore. Yeah. Thank, pardon me. Jack Wilmore. Uh, I had run into him. Or Dave Costell, too, maybe. And were, both of them. That's yeah. what I got him confused. Both of yeah. them I ran into yeah. when they were fairly young researchers as well and uh, somewhere, and they said that this would be a good thing. And mm -hmm. it, it literally just sort of started fr from there. I, uh, I got my master's at Michigan State, and actually I got into medical school about the same month I got my master's well, at, at Michigan okay. State, okay. which is a, a new primary care medical school, primary care only medical school wow. that had started. So I started at uh, Michigan State in 1970, 
at, in the med school. And uh, I did medical school because I had taken so many courses as a grad student yeah, sure. with the medical students, because it was a small class. The medical school was 30, 30 students. So I had, I had taken many of the courses, all, all the anatomy courses. Yeah, I you would have been so anatomy. strong in all the sciences. Yeah. Uh, so I did med school in three years. And uh, at the same time I was doing that, I was coaching. I'd like to say for money, but it really wasn't because mm -hmm. I didn't get paid. Mm -hmm. I just enjoyed coaching kids, so I was a swim coach. I'll be done. An age group swim coach had a lot of success. Just in, in, the, the, in the town? Just yeah, in the uh, adjoining town to East Lansing, a place okay. called Okemos. And absolutely loved that. And uh, so I had been an athlete, and I had been a coach. Yeah. And my, my initial sense getting into medicine really wasn't necessarily sports medicine, mm -hmm. which still was almost non-existent clinically at the time. It was adolescent medicine. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I went through med school, and in, at Michigan State, in the last two years, I was... Uh, uh, you, were, you were farmed out to various other communities. So I, was, I did my clinical years in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm -hmm. I coached there in my off whenever Swimming I got Swimming again? Swimming. And had a lot of success doing it there, too. High school level? Uh, high school swimming and age group swimming, both. Just loved it. Huh. And graduated. At that point, after I graduated, uh, I was the first uh, medical student from Michigan State to... Uh, match to a West Coast residency. hospital system and residency. Yeah. It, at that time, it was a, it was a, a, a rotating internship. They still had rotating internships then. Since I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to go into, mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was going to be family medicine, but I wasn't sure. I, I actually had ranked uh, old Stanford Hospital to be in San Francisco to be my number one choice. I got it. And so I went out there and met my wife. Had a, had a great year, came back to Grand Rapids, did my residency in family medicine, uh, got married, decided after the residency program, well, I was either going to go into private practice in Wisconsin as a family physician, mm -hmm. but I still had this desire to do a little bit of, of uh, a adolescent medicine and sort of tie that in with sports medicine if I could because I had that interest. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, I did a fellowship at Michigan, came back, did a fellowship at Michigan State in, in two things, in family medicine and in adolescent medicine. And it was during that year that I met my colleague Dave Howe, and the two of us had this interest in sports medicine. And you have to appreciate at the time, there was nothing. Right. right. There was nothing yeah. in clinical sports medicine. Yeah. And we just, we were two young bucks. and. He was doing a, fel a fellowship in family medicine, too. I said, hey, Dave, let's go and talk to the athletic director at, Mich at, at uh, Michigan State. When I mean, they already had a, something set up with the, with the uh, student health service. I go in and talk to the athletic director's name was, was Joe Kearney. And he, had a, he was very nice. He, sat he down ended up in Maryland, didn't he? I think he did. Yeah. He went out to Montana and the Big, Big Sky Conference, then came to, to Maryland. And he was very nice, listened to us, and by the time we left, you know, it was a nice man, and I sort of felt, well, one of these don't call us, we'll call you type yeah. thing. And we left it at that. The next day, he calls up and says, I'm impressed by you guys. Hmm. Do you want to be the team physicians for Michigan State? Wow. It was that easy. And what year was that? And we said, sure. That would have been uh, 1978. And, and each of you had a... A private practice at no, the time? No, we were each what? part of, we were fellows, that fellows at the in time. the Department okay. of Family Medicine. Okay. And subsequent to that, both of us were hired on to the department at the med school. Uh, in which department? In Family Medicine. Okay. Both of so us. You, so you, you turned that into a, basically a full-time job after your fellowship. Well, it wasn't, no, no. no? no that was an add-on. Oh, okay. I had responsibilities to teach. Oh, that's right, because you, you become a faculty member yeah. at the same time. Do sure, research sure. and all that yeah, stuff, yeah, but okay. ours, what we would do is we'd get done with the day, and then uh, 5 o'clock we'd do training room, which we'd split, and we'd split the, uh, the coverage of, you know, you've got to understand Michigan State's got 
24 varsity sports, about 850 yeah. Yeah, uh, scholarship is, athletes. It's a huge program. It's amazing, yeah, massive. And here we were taking it this on, How, not knowing the, anything. <laughs> not knowing anything. What, what was the trainer situation for you that, at that time? We had, there was a, a trainer who had been there for about 10 years prior who was not used to having physicians around. Yeah. And... Uh, had been doing just about everything. Just doing everything, and it, it was the old-time way to cover things. And yeah. what that meant was that if you were a football player, you got attention like that. Mm -hmm. If you were anything except a football player, that included basketball and hockey and other things. Yeah, you waited. You, huh? you either waited or you went over student health and got seen. Yeah. So it, there was no organizational component to it. We put that in. We used it as a, at a, as a uh, platform to put together our thoughts on it. And uh, out of that, really, in uh, I, I must say, in the first year, the very first year that we're there, we we uh, we win the the Big Ten championship in football. Oh wow! We win the Big Ten championship in basketball, and we win the Big Ten championship in baseball. Gee. It's the only time in the history of Michigan State that that's ever been done by all wow. three of those sports. And I'm saying, say, this is sort of interesting. Yeah. I sort of like this. This is looking good. This is, this is, if this happens every year, I'll be fine. <laughs> of course, it didn't, although the next year we got the national championship in basketball with Magic Johnson. So gradually, uh, we built this, and we built a, an educational program. We started the fellowship. We were the second fellowship in the country next to Cleveland mm -hmm. Clinic. Mm -hmm. Rosemary Augustine right. was, right. With, was the uh, first. Bergfeld. With Bergfeld and Lombardo. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we, we started the second one, and we got the curriculum going. Uh, we began to realize who in the country was interested in this. And there, there came to a point where there was a group which my discipline, the American Academy of Family Practice, which was not necessarily conducive mm -hmm. or welcoming to the idea of sports medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was a, there were five individuals that were all family physicians and went to them and tried to push them into really acknowledging what was being done. Mm -hmm. And that included uh, Jim Puffer, John Lombardo, no. Lee Rice, and Dave and myself. Steve Rice? No, Dave, uh, Lee Rice. I don't know. He's the only one of the group I don't know. Lee is, Lee is uh, uh, a DO in, uh, in San Diego. Oh, okay. So. And what was the reception? Well, we were called the Gang of Five. Right. That's what the reception was. You can figure that out. Yeah. It was not terribly pleasant. And they basically said that you guys are too young to be telling us what to do. See ya. And when, was, when would have that been? It would have been in the, uh, about, about 1990, 89. At that point, we, the five of us went to the American Board of Family Medicine, which is you know, the accrediting body. Yeah. Yeah. They welcomed us with, with open arms, and it was through the American board that the CAQ, the, the certifying uh, uh, movement, got going, and that in it, it was able to incorporate emergency medicine, pediatrics, uh, internal medicine, oh, wow. as well as ourself. And so anybody who was able to do a fellowship and it could be incorporated into that in, in, in the, that collective net. And that's what sort of started things uh, going. Did, did you stay involved with ACSM through this whole time? Yep. There were times it waxed and waned. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there were times in the, uh, in the, in the late uh, 1980s and early 90s when there were, we, we did a lot of work. I did a lot of work with Med Ed at that time. Uh, John Lombardo and I put together the concept of the team physician course mm, okay. based upon the curriculum that we had nice. had at Michigan State. Wow. We put together a three-part team physician course, put it together, got it going, got the support of ACSM, yeah. and uh, ran it that way. They were obviously phenomenal. Yeah. I must admit, uh, there was a great deal of skepticism with the first couple because uh, ACSM didn't want to lose money on something really that dealt with clinicians. And there was enough friction between the clinicians in the college and the rest. But I think one of the reasons why we got it going was probably because I think John Bergfeld was president right around that time. And he was, he was supporting us and yeah. therefore pushing through the board. Yeah. So we did the team physician course. 
uh, it it grew. Uh, that's the rest is, as they say, history. Yeah, that was phenomenal. And uh, then we put together the advanced team physician course, mm -hmm. did the same type of a thing. Yeah. Those were all things that helped uh, the attraction of the college to the uh, uh, by clinicians. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it was needed because there was there was a time when the clinicians were saying, "I'm not sure that this answers our needs." Mm -hmm. And, and so we, you know, that's why I'm saying it was off and on. But yeah, Warren was mentioning earlier about the clinical case studies and right. they were brought in and it had the same kind of result. Exactly. Uh, the clinical case studies, the uh, clinical lectures mm -hmm. that, would, uh, that we were part of, the presidential lectures, there, it began to diffuse the, the idea that the clinicians could only have this much yeah. of the program. And, yeah. Things like this. So it's it's uh, throughout the whole thing. I've been thinking about this this interview as we've, uh, especially over the last couple of days, that uh, really ACSM has been steadfast in its support of of exactly what the clinicians have have needed to go through, in spite mm -hmm. of the fact that for most cl cl clinicians now they there are other societies and organizations yes. that they can they can put their effort into. It's always been fascinating to me that, that this is really one of the only places uh, where you can begin to cross that bench research, clinical research line. Mm -hmm. As a former bench researcher, yeah. I understand the importance and the significance of that, perhaps even more than many, mm -hmm. that, 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 it's a, that it's a necessary thing. Uh, the, the buzzword today is translational research. That's mm -hmm. what they call it. Yeah. And uh, that type of, this type of research is what, where we have to go. And so as we look to the future, uh, ACSM remains the umbrella for sports medicine. Mm -hmm. In spite of all the other organizations, it still remains mm -hmm. that umbrella. And the translational portion of it is incredibly important. That's why we're, Last year, we, we went to Washington and politicked for the idea of physical uh, medicine, exercise medicine, mm -hmm. and the importance. Mm -hmm. It's because as a clinician, that's, that's the key yeah. to the health of my patients. Absolutely. So I've come full circle. Yeah. All the way from the bench. Yeah. Yeah. To the we, we've got, what, a couple minutes, maybe, <laughs> at most. Uh, did you go from Michigan to, to Indiana? No. Or was there something no, in between? No, there was something in between. The <laughs> something in between was University of Pittsburgh. Okay. And I was lured there uh, in 1995. Actually, uh, I was planning on taking a sabbatical, and I, I had a sabbatical awarded to me mm -hmm. at Michigan State, and uh, I did the sabbatical. The sabbatical was six months with John Sutton mm -hmm. in Australia. Yeah which uh, I took my family over and uh, it just, that it was just been wonderful. fun. He, is, he was such he, a great just, guy. And uh, when I came back, I ended up uh, being lured away from Michigan State by uh, University of Pittsburgh. I, I received the Art Rooney Endowed Chair oh, of wow. Sports Medicine in Pittsburgh. Wow. And while it was okay and while it was reasonable, their system wasn't really capable or set up well enough to really do what they thought they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, was, uh, it was an interesting educational time for me, but it was also very frustrating. And uh, it, you know, there are some systems that are just sort of set up to be able to accept what you want to do and mm -hmm. how to do it. And there are some that aren't, and this, this certainly wasn't. They, they thought they were, but they weren't. So you didn't stay there long? Stayed there four years. Oh, that's... And uh, got a lot done that's in the four enough. years. <laughs> and uh, then the, the uh, opportunity opened up at Indiana, where I've been for the last eight. Did you come in as chair there yeah, then? Yeah, I did. Fantastic. I had wanted very much to take the, uh, the effort and what reputation I think I have in sports medicine with me to a major academic medical center and try to help out my own discipline of family medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, because so often in, in AMCs, uh, you don't have the, the, uh, uh, the reputation as family medicine to, 
to thrive in there. Mm -hmm. So I was able to bring in my, my reputation and go from there. So it, it's worked out well. I, I'm close to the college. Uh, I served as its vice president up until the last year. Uh, I've watched it grow. I've watched it get more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, been, that's been a real nice opportunity for yeah. me. Well, thank you, Doug. Yeah, thank Thanks you. Thanks for stopping Appreciate by. Appreciate listening to me. Yeah, for that this one. is great. I wish we had more.